My name is Michael Green. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I am a body painter and a photographer. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Avi Ram and my pseudo is Michael Green. So if you want to hire me to go paint some murals around the country, definitely send all your information to Michael Green and I'll get it and I'll fly out to all of those events. And uh, paint the murals in the bathrooms of the uh, billion dollar mansions in uh, Tahiti or wherever, wherever he's working. Um, so uh, first off, I want to thank Donna and the Pro Air team uh, for putting this on. This is awesome for uh, people to be able to learn different things. Uh, I've enjoyed watching other people's instructions and other people's videos. Uh, hopefully, uh, you will get some information and some tips out of uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so, mostly what I do is I do art pieces for myself. I actually got into body painting through photography. So, I do art pieces for myself, uh, for artwork, but then I also started doing festivals. I've been doing festivals for, well, Sturgis for like five years now. Uh, I've been doing Fantasy Fest also. I paint down there in Florida. Specifically, uh, today I'm going to try to stay on point with um, festivals and, and doing that and setting it up and how to, how to um, work around the problems and things that, that you come up with. Um, so, for one, when I first started doing festivals, uh, some of the first ones were like Sturgis and things like that. I did it completely by myself. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into, and I quickly found out right away. Uh, so, being by yourself at a festival, you have to watch all of your stuff. You have to um, do everything for yourself. You have to set all of it up. You have to break it all down. You have to um, even watch it when you have to go off to the bathroom. You have to find someone who you can trust to be able to be there. So, it does get difficult when you're working by yourself. Uh, so I had done that for a while and then um, I started working with uh, Tabitha and Jay Batista, good friends of mine, they're awesome. Um, but having those guys jump in with me has been amazing because uh, now you have, uh, you have someone to help you with things. You have people that are talented in other areas that maybe you aren't that can step in and um, you know, jump on a design that you would kind of be intimidated by. Um, so, uh, definitely, so there's the good things and the bad things about working with another person or other people at a festival. Uh, for one, uh, obviously, the negatives are when you're by yourself. The negatives are the danger of being by yourself in an event. Maybe you're there for a week or whatever, and you're completely alone. Nobody knows anything about you. Uh, so that can be a little tricky, especially when you're in rough environments. Um, so that's a negative by being by yourself. Uh, the workload is tougher. Um, but the positives when you do have someone working with you is it is way more fun when you have other people with you. Um, you do have to make sure that you're working with people that you trust. Um, transparency, when, when we're done at the end of our day, we go back to uh, wherever we're staying and we'll pull out the wad of cash and we'll all count it in front of each other. Uh, you have to be able to trust the people that you're with um, and you have to uh, know that the people that you're working with are good people. Um, so I got lucky. I got Jay and Tabitha. Uh, they're amazing. Um, but uh, so also um, I was worried about, okay, well, if I only made X amount of thousand dollars, then if I'm splitting that with three people, how am I going to be able to make enough money? Well, the answer to that is when you're increasing the amount of work that you can do, hopefully you can, and also you're increasing the atmosphere around you and um, all of the, uh, the, you know, there's more stuff going on, so people are gravitated more to your booth. So you're actually, you don't realize it, but you're actually increasing uh, the life of your place by having more people and more stuff going on. When you have three body paints, now you're going to pull more people over to watch what's going on. So 
the answer was you actually can increase the amount of stuff that you're doing by having more bodies in there and more bodies working and you're splitting more money that you made. So it's a trade-off, but for me it was a good balance and it was a good trade-off. The, the key to doing festival work and making it successful is doing big impressive pieces, but doing it as fast as possible. Make them intricate, but also make them easy. And one of the ways that I do that is through stencils. I, I use stencils for a lot of my designs, for a lot of the stuff you see here. Some of it's freehand. Actually, I'll get into that later. Um, but, so I, I... Gio's on from Texas and Veronica awesome. from Italy. Nice, we got Italy's in the house. Um, so, the, uh, the designs that I work with a lot of times at festivals are stencil based and then I'll trick it out and do whatever I want to do with it. And hopefully we'll get to that and I'll be able to show you some stuff. Um, so you want to make them quick but impressive. Uh, also upselling, you want to make sure you upsell as much as you can. So if you can add on glitter as you're painting, okay, wow, this would look really cool with glitter. Oh yeah, I want some glitter. Okay, yeah. You know, you add five bucks, add this, add that, whatever. Um, and you can maximize with your client who you have in front of you. Uh, you can make more money that way. So definitely upselling, give them extra options. Like say, uh, maybe Jay's working on a half sleeve and he's like, you know, it'd be really cool if we worked it all the way down the whole thing. Well, now you just got a full sleeve um, for a temporary tattoo design. Uh, or something like that. So adding also a lot of times I'll have women uh, who will want just a chess piece and they're kind of thinking frugally uh, and they just want to do just coverage but then they realize the design would be way cooler if we could do like a full torso kind of thing. Um, so you know going from just a chest to like more of a full coverage type uh, torso thing um, is, is actually good. Question for you. Have Question. you, have you, Jay asked, have you ever got, uh, gotten someone to get painted that was intimidated? Absolutely. Um, so, and, and I will actually, when I cover the, uh, the lookbook, I will talk about that. Thank you, Jay. That's a good tip, uh, or a good point. Um, so one of the things that we'll do when we have, uh, when we have a downtime is, if someone does come and they want to get painted and maybe let's say they ask for a mediocre design, whatever, uh, or something smaller, uh, that doesn't take me a lot of time. What I will do is I will actually trick that design out even more. I'll go a thousand and ten percent on that design. The reason I do that is because if I've got that person in my booth and I'm painting, now I have a tension in my booth. As soon as that person walks out and I go back to my cell phone waiting, it's going to be a long time before that next person comes because it looks like there's no life there, there's nothing going on. So put that down in your little tip book, that's, that's big time. I have another question. Emily another asks, question. how do you think the new sanitation is going to affect the timing and how can you utilize stencils without bleed when flipping? Uh, so I will actually cover the using stencils, because, uh, using uh, stencils and flipping because that is something I do a lot. Um, and as far as uh, the timing now with COVID, uh, I'm sorry to say, guys, but like if you're not doing airbrush, you really need to start using airbrush. Um, yes, you can sanitize your brushes. Uh, you know, working with, with water-based paints and things like that. Uh, and everybody does, and I know you guys do a fantastic job of doing it, but I'm just gonna tell you the mentality of people out there, your customers, when they walk in and they see that you're not touching the body um, with paint, uh, especially on faces and things like that. Uh, on the body, it's not as, um, I feel like on the body, it's not as like taboo because you're not touching a face or a nose or something like that. So you're using, I'm using stencils, but I'm using stencils on a torso. Uh, I'm not, I, and sometimes I do, uh, I will use a stencil on a face. You just have to clean that stencil, put it in alcohol, wash it off. This is all brand new. Um, you know, we have to change the ways that we do things. So that is, uh, that's something that we have to, to take into uh, consideration. So, um, 
going back, talking about, um, talking about drawing crowds. Uh, so when you trick out a design, you have that design, you have that person in there. Not only are you putting out a knockout piece that you're sending out to the public, and that's your walking billboard. Uh, they see that, and where did you get that done? Uh, you can tag your stuff, you can put your name on it, and people will know. Most people that get body painted by us, they're very happy to take a, a stack of cards and pass them out to, uh, to people in the crowd that ask about us. Um, so we've always had uh, a great uh, rapport with the people that we wind up getting painted. They enjoy the experience, and that's another thing. When they're there at the festival, they're there enjoying being body painted. They enjoy the whole thing. It's not just about, you know, you paint it, you made your money, and now those people are gone. You're actually creating a salesman, and you're putting them out there. So you want to do the best always that you can. Um, so one thing I want to talk about uh, as far as, you know, publicity, uh, at, at Sturgis, there's a buddy of ours. He may or may not be listening. Johnny Chaos. Not Johnny Chaos, but the other Johnny Chaos. Uh, the basis, Johnny Chaos. So we've got a, uh, a friend of ours at Sturgis. Uh, he's one of the bands that plays at Sturgis. And we painted him up as a full skeleton. He went up on stage, and he was playing in his body paint, which, shout out to Pro Air, because that stuff stays. Uh, he, he was up there up. sweating crazily. Plus, we did... Uh, neon colors and they had neon lights it looked awesome but the cool thing was when we uh when we put that out there he went up on stage the next day we had a group of i don't remember if it was four or five different people that all came to get full skeletons and went out that day so we did extra special for johnny and he went up and marketed us, and then we wound up selling all those body paints the next day. So um, you're putting your marketing out there. Um, so, uh, so now I'll go into the things that you bring to a festival um, and the balance of what you can bring and what you shouldn't bring. Because you have a vehicle or a bag or whatever that you have. Uh, and that's all you have. So you, you have to consolidate uh, what you can actually bring to a festival. I travel, um, you guys, the Aztec is an ugly uh, vehicle, but dude, you can pack crazy amounts of stuff in it. So I actually have an Aztec, I pull the seats out, and I load all of my lights, tent, bags, all of my gear, but it has to fit into a certain space. That's all I have. I don't pull a trailer or any of that kind of stuff. So you've got to consolidate your traveling kit. Yes, and when your wife goes, you wife is only allowed one bag. Yes. <laughs> when my wife comes, she can only have one bag. There's no shoe container. <laughs> anyway. Um... But, uh, yeah, so it's important to figure out what you need, what you don't need. When you're doing a big, huge festival that you're going to be there for, like, a week, you, yes, you need a tent, you need, a, uh, you need chairs, you need tables, you need workspace, but you have to figure it out. Most festivals, you're going to be working in a 10 by 10 space. So that's super important because you have to be able to fit everything into that space. So if you can mock it up, get yourself your tent, fix it all up at your house and figure out, okay, this works here, this, this works there. Um, but that's super important. Um, so obviously you want things that are going to draw attention to your booth. And that's where stuff like this is going to come in. Um, you've, got, you've, got, uh, you've got banners. Uh, you can get banners printed out. The upside is banners look super professional and awesome. The downside is once you printed that banner, you can't change it out. So I actually do like to have uh, image boards that I'll put up and I can actually take these photos off. If I'm at Sturgis, I'm putting this up. If I'm you know, at a different festival, maybe uh, uh, whatever, um, like a uh, Day of the Dead thing. This is actually, this is Tabitha's work, by the way. Uh, some of these are mine. Some of these are uh, stuff that Jay's done. 
This is our uh, image board that we use for Sturgis, so I try to mix all of this stuff in here. Um, on that topic, I want to say one thing. If this is not your image and you just download it and put it up on your storyboards, that's no bueno. Uh, you guys shouldn't be doing that. You guys definitely should be making your own pieces. If you don't have a piece that looks like this, do it in your studio or do it at your place at home. Get a photo of it, put it on your board. But do your own work and showcase it. Don't use other other, other artists' work. Um, and I'll go over that when I go over the lookbook too. Um, but that's super important. But anyway, so these are just some demo designs that we have. But it's good to be able to show kind of a random change of stuff rather than just having a billboard that's printed. The nice thing that I like about these is we can hook them to our tent. And when I'm packing and loading, it's nice and thin. I can slide it into a spot. And then when we get there, the, the tri-fold um, foam cord. So you can just pop it open. I just put some grommets in the top. And then... Megan um, asked, how do you attach your images? Yeah, so, so I, I just put grommets in the top. And then we can string uh, uh, bungee cords across and just put them up that way and you just tape your up into the frame tape the your tent. images yeah i just tape them um i just tape them onto the board and that way i can take them off and put them on and these boards have been through heck like um i probably you know it's almost time to get some new ones but they're not that expensive and you can uh you can kind of change it out all the time which is good um, also, I put, um, I always, 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 uh, well, let's see, hold on one second. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Um, yes, okay, so banners and picture boards. Uh, having a full-length mirror, if you're doing body painting, is a good idea. Uh, that's, that's great to have uh, so that people can see themselves. Then also, um, go ahead back there, Trina. Oh, you're going to talk about your fun fact? Yeah, uh, so what I do with uh, different signs and things like that is I'll put, I'll put up just kind of fun things for people to read. Uh, so they can, it, it's, a, it's a conversation starter. People can see it and say, oh yeah, that's, that's funny or you know, whatever. So um, this right here. These signs are all over the place. It's a non-pushy sign. It's nice and friendly, but it's a reminder. So you can keep reminding people to give you tips. I'm not joking. Sometimes at Sturgis, I'll charge a certain price and people will almost tip me at least that amount. Um, people are good tippers and if you're not putting it out there, that's your problem. You should be waking. You should be making way more money um, by having the tip jar uh, and and kind of just gently uh, letting them know. Um, also, this sign. Um, I'll put these up. So please ask the ladies before taking photos. They usually don't mind, but it's way less creepy. Um, this kind of sends a message of who I am as a person, how I feel about it. It also reminds the guys in the background that are pulling out their cell phones and just thinking that it's okay. But it puts your customer at ease too because they see who you are and they see the type of person that they're working with and that puts them into a level of comfort. Um, so, uh, and it's also just always good to remind people to be polite because sometimes they're maybe not so polite. Uh, so anyway, so having little signs and things like that around in the booth, I like to have. Um, so yeah, my tipping is awesome. Then I'll also, I'll put, I'll post images up to uh, kind of show my work and what I can do. Uh, that doesn't nail it down and say, this is all I'm doing. But then if you don't show things like this, they're expecting to pay a lot more money. So you have to, you have to balance it with what you really could do, but also um, with some simple stuff that they feel like they can afford. So kind of, kind of get a mix of, of and quick, that. quick. Um, so go ahead back there. Uh, so the other thing, um, 
The, I, I, I do use a disco light. These things are awesome, super cheap, don't take up a lot of space, but in your booth, it lights the whole booth up and it gives you atmosphere. Having people, it's, it's like the firelight drawing the fireflies. When you have all of this going on, you're actually pulling people to your booth. So, super cheap little light bulb thing on a, on a thing, but that, um, that brings more people to your, um, to your thing. Um, so, tip jar. Like I said, tip jar, super, super important. Uh, always have that out where people can see it. It, again, reminds them to be, uh, to be courteous and give you a little tip. Um, and then I also throw out some cards. I'll have cards laying around. If you don't have a business card, why do you not have a business card? You have to have business cards. So, I've actually got, these are my... Um, my body paint cards. So I've got my information on there, Facebook, um, and just examples of my work. You don't have to have a thousand things on there, um, but it's good to be able to show what you do. Uh, uh, Mana asks, is the bulb what you buy? The, yeah. yeah, it's like a five dollar. Yeah, so, so that, it's just bulb, a regular lamp. That literally is a lamp that I bought from Walmart for maybe ten bucks, and uh, the bulb. Uh, is separate. It just, it literally is just a screw in bulb. Um, yeah, so you can find that guy. If you look up a uh, disco light bulb, probably on Facebook or uh, on Amazon, you'll find it. Uh, but it literally just kind of spins. And it's a good way to just bring people to your um, to your booth. Michael, I have another question. Yeah. Megan asks, how do you uh, how do you do tipping with multiple artists, shared and split, or separate tip jars? Yeah. So um, I mentioned before about um, having people that you work with well, that you trust, and 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 all of that. Um, with everybody's different, so figuring all that out is between you. Uh, what Jay and Tabitha and I all agreed with, and it has to be what everybody agrees with and everybody feels comfortable. Um, we all put our tips into the tip jar and we keep it all there. Uh, we put all our, our money that's coming in into the money box and that goes there. So we actually do keep our tips separate and our money box separate. And we'll go through the money box first, go through all of that. Then we take all the tips out, go through all the tips and we split it three ways. That's what works for us. So it just depends on who you're working with. For me, I 1000% am a person that wants to be as trans transparent as possible. I never want anyone to feel like I'm cheating them. And I feel that they're the same way and I'm lucky with that. Um, I can't say everybody's like that, but our group is awesome. Um, so, so that is what we do is uh, split it up that way. Um, so. Uh, also, when you uh, are doing festivals, you do need to make sure that you are uh, by whatever code you have to be. So specifically, I have to, when I work at, um, the, uh, at Sturgis, I have to get a vendor's license. I have to pay for that. I also have to pay my state sales tax. Um, so. I've got to, I've, I've, you have to keep on top of that. You have to know like what is required at what venue. And that's kind of up to you. You, you've got to know what you can do. I'm at a half hour. Okay. Um, so next up the lookbook. Lookbook is super important. Um, let me go back here. Yeah. So this basically is, whoops. Um, the lookbook that we put out and it has a ton of designs that people can look through and and kind of check out and see what they want to do so you have a variety of different things that you're showing them also capitalize on stupid stuff that's going on in the world fidget spinners not anymore but when I was doing these it is hilarious people bought the crap out of it, and I sold that design so many times because it's funny. Um, so just kind of capitalize on what's going on currently. COVID, making jokes about it or something is probably gonna be good. 
Jessica asks prices. She struggles with figuring out right prices. Yeah, so um, the price is always going to be a struggle. And I'll be honest, when you're doing different events, it's going to change too. If I'm doing something local in the Midwest, it's one price. Uh, when I go to Sturgis, I was actually, I had priced myself out and people told me I was way too cheap and you need to bring the rates up. And even still, people tip like, at, even at that point and still now, people will tip like three and four times. It, it's just ridiculous. So you have to figure that out and then you go down to a place like Fantasy Fest and if you're not charging at least this amount, then you're, you've, that's a, that's a tough question. It kind of depends on the venue that you're at. Um, so anyway, so, so these are just some quick designs uh, that we have in the lookbook. Uh, what Jay was talking about earlier is, uh, do you have people like if they're uncomfortable or if they're kind of nervous about it? This is definitely a key place to be able to land a job because they'll come by, they'll look at it, they're curious, but they don't know for sure. While they're flipping through the lookbook, for one, um, they will see different body paints on different body types. So it's not all the perfect little model and they'll say, oh, well, she did it. Well, that person did it. Oh, well, I can do that. So you're actually helping them um, understand that it's okay to do it. You're also, um, you're giving them ideas, like maybe they can't come up with something, they don't know what they would do. Uh, also, you're, you're pushing them into a direction, you're not, you're not telling them, but you're pushing them into a direction that you have a design that you're comfortable with. So 90% of the time, you can actually, you're faster because it's something that you already know. Um, so, and then, um, you know, you're, I mentioned using your own art artwork instead of, uh, you know, obviously, oh, I, I wanted to, so I have Tabitha's work up here, I have Jay's work up here, but it's because we work together. So that's the only reason why their stuff is up there. When if you, I didn't, when I you, would not have, and when, when you I don't do, go out. when I do yeah. like the naked bike ride or other things locally, I take those off and I put up my own stuff up. Um, so Jay asked, you mentioned stencils earlier. How do you keep yours organized? Yeah. And also the, another question earlier was, uh, what stencils do you use? So I actually use a bunch of stencils. Um, uh, if you, obviously you should have, you should have heard of, um, uh, Tattoo Pro. Those are Wiser's. He's got some great stencils for Tattoo Pro, um, for, uh, doing tattoo work. Uh, his stuff is great. Um, there's, there's a lot of them out there. There is, let's see, Diva, there's Carrie Combs just came out with one, uh, Faux Real. So mine are, uh, I have my own line, and that is these guys right here. So this is my, my brand of stencil that I came up with. Um, it is Killer Stencils, and this is how I keep them organized. I actually have them put to be in a binder. Um, I did that so that that way I could keep track of them and that's kind of what my system of stencils is based on. Uh, so that way I can put them in the book, I know where they're at, I know how to get to them. Uh, yeah, so killer stencils. This is my line and uh, I will show you never before seen this, this is my uh, this is my packaging. There you go. Pretty sweet, right? Pretty sweet. So um, yeah, so I basically run off of three different sizes. I've got my um, large, then I've got kind of a uh, semi-vertical one there, and then the little guys right there. So yeah. All that information is actually on my page in the beginning. It's Killer Stencils uh, on Photoshop. It's, uh, I mean, on Photoshop. On Facebook, it's at Killer Stencils. Um, so, let me... Oh, somebody wants a closer look at your stencils. Yeah. 
There's a... Uh... We got, we got glare on them. Oh, okay. That's that. Um, so, and I'll just, I'll flash this real quick just so you can kind of see it. Um, if you want to go for the uh, stencils, boom, killer stencils. My uh, MJD Body Art right there. And I also make pasties for body painters. I don't use them in festivals, so if I get to them, I will, but I don't know if I will, timing-wise. Uh, but that is these guys right here. So I make these two. Um, so these are pasties. You can't see them. They're, uh, bring them really close because uh, they're getting in the glare of the light. Yeah. Trying to... There you go. So... So those are some things. I do a lot of stuff, guys. I'm a photographer, too, and I, I, I do too much. My wife says it all the time, and I do too much. I don't say that all the time. She does, but she does. I don't. She does it, <laughs> but she does. Um, so so those, are, uh, those are my stencils. Um, but So that's what I use when I'm, when I'm uh, working on festivals. So now I want to actually bring in... A lot, of, a lot of times I hear you guys asking about what's the best kit, what's the best this. I can tell you hands down, I have the best kit for airbrush festival work. And it's one of two. And there's only one other one, and I actually built it from, uh, with my buddy Jay uh, after I built mine. So go ahead and back that out. Sure. I'm move this out. Mana asked to see example of your work with the stencils, so... That is coming. Yeah, hopefully if, if I'm, I'm going to try to get to that. So, all right. So we show up at our event. Obviously, this is for a 10 by 10 tent where we're there for a week and we have all that time. If you're not working at a huge gig and you need to be small and quick, my system is ridiculous. Real quick, can you tell Andrew what your pasties are made out of, please? Um, they're made of... Elven fairy dust and <laughs> latex um, or see, latex of foam latex. He's no, asking. They're, not, they're neither. So it's uh, proprietary. They're latex free. They are latex free. Yes, they are latex free. Okay, ready for the kit. All right. So we show up at our event. This is all if you have a big, huge ten by ten. If you don't have this, then you bring in your kit and you have to be as fast as possible, right? So. Here we go. I roll in. And this is everything I need. Pretty much everything I need. In this case right here. Um, so, the first thing you have to do is make sure that when you roll in, you roll it into the right side. <laughs> right? There you go. Alright, so, here we go. We showed up at our event. Now, it's going to take us a while to get our table set up, but, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. And then when we actually finally get our table set up, we still have to somehow get our airbrushes ready to go. But it'll take a while, but we'll get it figured out. And then we have to have our stands so we've got to have our airbrush stands and it'll actually take us a while to uh, to get that set up actually this will take a while sometimes my hands don't like wing nuts there we go uh, you know when you're working with um, several airbrushes, you've got to have two stands. So, we've got two sides there so I can put all my stuff. We've got, we need our baby wipes. We need our, uh, you know, COVID friendly stuff. Uh, oh, we are going to need, actually, unfortunately, we'll have to try to figure out a way that we can um, have paper towels readily available, uh, but they don't. You don't want them in the way of 
what you're doing, but you need them when you need them. So we've got our paper towels there. We've got our toolkit uh, in case we have any problems with our airbrushes. So we've got that. We've got our Q-tips, by the way, uh, another little tip. Uh, these are from CVS. It's a CVS brand, Beauty 360. The Q-tips are pointed. Pretty cool. If you're doing uh, temporary tattoos, um, Weiser's temporary tattoos, you can actually use the, the pointed Q-tips. We've got our alcohol bottle. Uh, then we have, uh, yeah, pretty much that. Oh, super important. If you want your, your paintings to stay, you've got to get, make sure you find the super expensive fixer spray. Um, this will make your, your body paints last really good. It's the, it's the super expensive fixer. Angelina said, did you make the suitcase table yourself? Yes. So I actually built this for myself. Um, and then, so I have, uh, I have my other stencils and things down in here, ready to go. Now, this guy, uh, going back to that question, yes, I did build it. Uh, I will tell you that the components alone in this thing went for like $200 probably to buy all the stuff that I needed. So would, would I build one for someone else? I don't know, but maybe I would actually do a design video and sell the design video. So... Um, my wife's rushing me. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting this. Uh, so, 99% uh, alcohol. When you're cleaning your airbrush equipment, 99%. You don't want to use, you can use 91. 99 is going to get it super clean. Look at that, Pro Air Solids. Got to have those in your kit. Uh, then... I've got marbles for my paint. You always want to put marbles inside of your paint. Uh, it shakes up the sediment that gets down into the bottom. So super important to have. Um, million tips coming at you like rapidly. Okay, airbrushes. Everybody's like, oh, what kind of airbrushes do you use? They're all good. Honestly, they're all good. Badger's great. Pro Air, uh, Pro Air's, uh, she's got a line um, that works really well. Um, the Iwatas is what I use. Uh, Avi uses Pache. So there's not one brand that I would specifically say better than the other. I personally just have Iwatas mostly. So um, this, if you can take a look at my kit in here, this is how I store my airbrushes. Um, I keep them clean. I keep the tips away from getting hit. I personally do not keep the back ends on. I don't like having the back ends on, uh, so I take them off, but I store them this way to keep them protected. Uh, when I'm using them, I'm cautious about what I'm doing, and honestly, I think I've only, ever since, I've only dropped like maybe one airbrush and had an issue with it um, because I'm careful with it. So, uh, airbrush bottles, I use siphon feed. Sorry, my compressor just kicked in. Um, I, use, uh, I use siphon feed airbrushes uh, primarily. I don't use gravity feed because you waste paint by using gravity feed. If I have a color that I'm going to use that I'm not going to use a lot of, then I'm going to... Hold on one second. Can, yeah. chair. Uh, if I'm going to use a color that just briefly, then I'll use my gravity feed and I'll pour it in there. Otherwise, I'll try to use my siphon feed one. Um, another quick tip. These bottles with the metal tops, plastic, okay? Um, these are no bueno. Don't use these. This is my alcohol, so I use it for my alcohol. Um, but, uh, and that's just alcohol in there. It's just backwashed into it. But, um, that's my alcohol. Don't use these on your pro air because with your pro air bottles, you actually have a straight tube that goes straight down into the tube. There's no bend. 
If you have a bend inside, it will clog up on you, and it's and it's bad. Spencer asks, "How do you keep the key, the paint from spilling while transporting?" Yeah, Spencer, that's you know, Spencer, that's a great question. Um, see that guy right there? This little toothpick. So I keep my caps on. I keep a toothpick into the hole. Okay, so. The reason I do that is because when I'm transporting, I don't want, they're gonna turn over and I don't want that paint to spill out. So toothpick is in there and it's plugging that hole. It's also keeping oxygen out, which is keeping uh, my paint from drying up. This, uh, the cap also. So um, honestly, the person, uh, I'll give you a, a multi-million dollar industry right here. Whoever can come up with a cap that has a dog lead on it that will put a plug inside of there, just the post that's all together, why don't we have that? So anyway, so I do a toothpick, okay? Um, and that not only does it, it keep my paint from spilling, but it also makes sure that my hole is clear for when I actually do want to start painting. Um, I don't have to worry about whether or not it's not clear or not. Michael, um, I have Terry asking. She's seen lots of artists uh, without the back in. Why is that? And I'll, I'll and, go into that when I'm doing the painting. And then also Cameron says, do you use the quick connect to switch colors quickly? Absolutely, yes. And we'll go into that too. Um, so, so when I'm shaking my paint, I take my finger and I'll hold it over the toothpick and over the over the, uh, the cap to make sure it doesn't come off. And now I'm not splashing paint everywhere all over myself and everywhere else. Uh, so now I can actually shake that paint bottle after you, here's a huge tip, write this one down guys. After you have shaken this bottle up, breathe it. If you don't do that, when you take this off, pfft, volcano lava flow, okay? So you have to breathe it after you've shaken it then you can take your stuff off and you're ready to go, okay? Um, so, Pro Air. Uh, let me show you the varieties of paint that I have in here, actually. We have Pro Air, and then we also have Pro Air, and then also make sure you have some Pro Air, and if, um, you know, some other types of Pro Air. You have 10 minutes. Um, so, that's that. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can, now I do have a compressor in here as well. I bought this a long time ago. It's a little, uh, Iwata Ninja. This manifold is actually the air tube. So there is a uh, air that is stored in here. The only reason I'm not using it is because it doesn't store enough air and it would be kicking on continuously and you guys would be listening to it. So otherwise, all I would do is roll this in, plug this in, and I'm ready to go. So um, that's how I run my, uh, run my kit with festivals. So let me see if I can, I'm gonna try to do this super fast, sorry guys. Um, he, uh, Spencer asked how heavy the case is. Have you ever weighed it? Oh. The case is super heavy, so do not ever think you're going to put this on an airplane. Um, it is very, very heavy, and the more paint you put into it, the more, the more equipment. Um, having a compressor inside of it already. Actually, this compressor, one thing I did want to say is Donna actually has those little lunchbox compressors. I don't have one, but that would be absolutely perfect for this kit because it would, incre it would decrease the weight um, because that thing is super light, but it's strong enough to be able to do an entire show. You can you can um, use that. So that's what do you a good what do you do if no electricity? Uh, you make people have electricity for you. You tell them that you can't work without it. So most festivals, they actually you know you check in with them. You say this is what I need. This is what I have to have, and and they'll take care of it for you. Um, so uh, let me. Have you backed that out? I'm going to grab, all right guys. So Spencer, you asked about uh, quick disconnects. Yes. So if you guys don't know, this is a quick disconnect, this guy right here. So changing out guns uh, for me 
Um, dang it. I wanted to tell you also, a lot of times people are like, oh my God, I can't, uh, airbrushes are so expensive. I can't afford them. Well, yes, you can because I didn't pay for any of these guns. No, I wasn't given to them by Iwata. Um, I just told my family, hey guys, instead of buying me Christmas stuff, instead of buying me birthday stuff, I'm going to save it up and I'm going to, I'm going to buy some brushes. So they wound up buying me airbrushes. And then the next year I got another set of six. So 12 of these guns I did not pay for. So don't say you can't afford it, figure out how to get them. Um, also, I will say that these are your tools for your business. You have to spend money for your business. When I'm doing photography, um, I have to buy a $2,500 camera. So you have to spend money to be able to make money. Um, okay, so I kind of want to try, I'm going to try to uh, maybe do a quick little uh, demo for you guys. So let's now. Um, I did ask some models to come over, so um, obviously they're going to be topless, so let's all be adult here. Let's not, you know, be, be lewd and crude. So we're going to have them come in. And so they're just really shy, so try to be nice. All right, I was thinking maybe we'd get one or two. We, it looks like we might just get one. Um, but uh, I'll show you one of, my, uh, one of my designs that I do a lot of. Uh, so let's go. And the way that I do these is I usually keep one color for one gun. So again, put this down, shake. Bleed. Take my caps off. I usually keep my uh, my super super expensive fixer spray cap. I usually keep that on the side, and then with all of my little red caps and my toothpicks, I put them in there. So at the end of the day, I know where they're at. They're not all lost. Another little tip for you: make sure you close that bottle back. Grab a. Uh, Paper towel, make sure everything's blowing good. That's good, so my red is good. Okay, so quick disconnect right here. Uh, and I, so I use four ounce bottles to save from having to keep filling, um, but it does kind of put a kink right there on the, on the um, thing. But, so that's how easy it is to change from one color to the next. You literally just push that in and you're ready to go to the next color. Uh, so then I'll take these guys and put them in my stand. So let's get the blue. Do you have a prep, uh, GOS, how do you prep them so they won't get stained? Do you have to base the model so the paint doesn't stain? Two questions, Spencer and Geo. Do I prep the model? I'm not sure what... I guess I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, so they won't get stained? So the paint won't stain them? No, um, I don't. And typically with uh, Pro Air, it comes off with uh, liquid soap. Okay, someone asked why do I keep the backs off earlier? And the reason for that is sometimes, even though I know this gun is clean. Oh, I sorry. There might be, uh, because problems on the fly. All right, that should be clean. So let me, yeah, it's not sucking anything up in there. So if it's not sucking anything out, it could be... Do you clean the mannequin? I'm sorry, mannequin. Do you clean the person off with alcohol? Pat, oh, Patty if, asks. Yeah, if it's, if it's or a cleaner. super sweaty day, um, it, it, it does help uh, to try to prep the skin. Uh, it's going to make the, uh, the paint stick better. 
Oh, the reason, uh, Wendy said that Dutch did one and he uh, pre-painted his daughter's back with wolf so that she wouldn't be stained and easier to remove is why, why people are asking. Right. Generally at festivals, no, um, because it's, it's, a, it's super fast. You're getting it out there. They're doing it. They don't necessarily uh, care about, uh, about that. Um, they just want to do it party and they're going to wake up in it the next day and, and whatever. So, all right, we got our white going, so our blue, sorry guys, I'm, when I'm thinking about this, I'm trying to get out of the glare. Okay, that should be good, so I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Spencer says we are asking about the mannequin. Is it going to stain the mannequin, not live models? I'm sorry. Oh, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I just, I actually honestly prep these just for this, uh, for this, uh, doing this demo. Um, if you want to get a hold of some live models, go work for uh, Macy's visual department for a while and find out when they're going to be throwing out their old stuff. And then you can get all the mannequins you need and you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Mandy asked, Michael, do you do workshops once we are all free? <laughs> yes, um, I do workshops. Uh, if you have a group of seven or eight people and want to have me out and give me a place to crash on your couch, I'm totally down for that. Uh, so definitely, uh, yes. Matter of fact, I was going to be doing one up in uh, hopefully the Baltimore area. But uh, then COVID happened, so, so we'll see. All right, so I'm going to do a quick design. This is going to be like the American flag. Um, so that's what this stencil here is. And Can you show it to him? Yep. That's this guy right there. It's your design. This is one of mine. This is uh, uh, the killer stencils. She says go, and then she says stop. I don't know what she wants me to do. She says hurry up, and then she says explain this. I don't know. Um, yes. It's love. It's all love. All right. So um, I will tell you, I've never sprayed on a, like, uh, on a body like this, a uh, plastic mannequin body. So we'll see how this goes with a stencil. Um, I've done uh, brush work on it, but not with a stencil. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. This is live, right? That's why it's cool. Okay, so also, um, I guess before we get too far, this guy right here and this guy right here, yeah, and this guy right here, this is going to be the giveaway, guys, so I'm giving those away to the person that answers in the text first, and the question is, what is the name of Pro Air's mascot dog? First person to post in the, in the text gets to, uh, gets to win that. All right, so whoever that is, you gotta know the name. And Erica, you're not allowed to answer. All right, so here we go. Gonna do a quick design. All right, so someone comes in, they want a flag. Cool thing about the flag is it's not super intricate and detailed. And I can do it fast. While you're doing that, I'm gonna answer one of the questions from earlier. The question was, have you ever had the hybrid paint, I'm sorry, Wendy, have you ever had the hybrid paint melt off with a heavy drinker, nightclub, Key West, who also is sweating? So it is an alcohol-based product. Honestly, uh, there was at the Naked Bike Ride. We have people that are um, drinking heavily and they do have issues with it. 
alcohol is in your body and you're sweating alcohol, so it is going to break it down. As much as you can, you can try to use the fixer and other things, but at that point, water-based paint is going to be running way worse. So, Wendy, the only time we've been doing the naked bike ride for eight years maybe yeah. in St. Louis uh, in mid-July. It's very humid, very hot. Um, after the b naked bike ride, they run, they bike like 10 miles and with alcohol on board, um, in those years, we've only had two men come back, uh, that did sweat it off on their chest. Um, and, and we wiped them off and, and helped them out again, but they were drinking heavily too. So. Did anybody answer the question yet? Alex asks, do you make your own stencils or does a company do them? Uh, no, I make my own. Um, so, actually, I'm pretty proud of that fact. Let me show you. This is how my stencils come to life. Donna asked, can I get a clue on the dog's name? So, so this is how my stencils come to life. This is my drawing okay these are my drawings that I do it's not a vector file that I download um, so I'm drawing those and then I load them into a program and make the stencil so that's how I make mine um, I actually am and you have a laser cutter images, um, and and that's how that's done so yeah no I don't use a company I do make my own um, I have a, I have a laser cutter that I bought, which was really expensive. So I need you guys to buy stencils because I need to pay off the laser cutters. Um, so yeah. All right. So again, we're being super sloppy. Doesn't matter because this design can be super sloppy. It's meant to be super sloppy. Uh, so we are, get that back on there. Right now, I'm just throwing down color. Anybody on the dog? I can't give you a hint. It, it, it's, uh, well, the hint is it's Erica's dog. So if you know what Erica's dog's name is, then you win. All right. So, I put this, uh, put this down. Yes, we ship to the Netherlands. Intentionally sloppy. What thickness of plastic do you use for your stencils? Um, I think it's seven mil. I believe it's seven mil. All right, but so guys, I went on this super sloppy, but it didn't matter. It's, and that's the beauty of something like this is it's super fast. And when you're done with it, it looks like, wow, look at all that detail. But honestly, it's a hot mess. So, um, so you don't have to be crazy particular with it. Um, but so going back to what I said before about having the impact, um, you want it to be something that is visually impacting, um, that looks good from a mile away. And I'm literally just trying to... Donna, if somebody gets the name right, go ahead and say so because I don't know it. <laughs> the dog's name. Oh, I did say it earlier, so she knew. And uh, so you'll notice, um, can you bring the camera around here? Yeah. With this design, it gets sloppy over other colors, but you want it to do that. So it's going to have like Oh, well, it didn't blend or it blended too much or it's this or that. No, it's supposed to look like this. And that's what's cool about it. Okay. So I, I actually designed, I did this design in Sturgis probably about five years ago. 
Uh, I was sitting bored, I had nothing to do, and I got tired of doing the same flag over and over and over and over. So I literally came up with this, I did it, and this is probably one of my biggest sellers, especially at like bike rallies and stuff. People love this design, and um, I even, at Fantasy Fest this year, <laughs> Jay and I were walking around, and I actually saw someone did this, and at first I was like mad, because I was like, somebody just stole my design, and I was kind of mad about it, and then I was like, oh, well, maybe it's kind of like Mark Reed's tiger face. Because um, everybody does a Mark Reed tiger face. So, I'll say that you guys can start doing this design. Just make sure you call it the MJG uh, flag design. As long as I get credit for it, I'm cool. What did you say, Trina? I just said it's a compliment. Oh. It's a compliment when somebody... It is. So, yeah, at first I was like, man, somebody stole my design. But then I was like, well, it is... It's cool that people are actually imitating what I've done. So, um, so that actually is a cool thing. I'm not going to blow this thing, like, way out and go crazy with it. Because uh, I don't want to, like, I know we're close on time. I just want to get it to... So looking pretty good. So like super hard, right guys? This is like way difficult to do. Oh my God, it's scary. Airbrush is hard. Oh, by the way, I do also do an airbrush class. Um, so if you are interested in that, you can have me come out uh, and teach a workshop for you guys. I'm happy to do that. Andrea Nickel is the winner. Andrea Nickel! She gets herself a little package. Nice. Nice job, Andrea. So the answer was Loki. Okay, so. And again, you can go in and fill in areas, do all that, whatever you need to do. All right, so this is a point where you do have to worry about bleeding. Sometimes colors will bleed. If I put white over this, it kind of would bleed into the blue and it would kind of have a little more bluish. So that's when I would pull out my super expensive fixture spray. Pat says, how much do you charge for this flag design? Uh, I So that message me because it varies. At Sturgis, it's one thing. Fantasy Fest, your, your prices range, so it's, it's different. Um, so, super expensive fixer spray. I pop that on over the blue because I'm gonna put white into this and I don't want to, my wife's telling me something. You're fine. Oh, uh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, so there, so now I've, I've got my blue sealed. It, it's making a barrier over the blue so the white doesn't fade into it. Um, and now I'll go in and throw some stars on there. Andrew and Nicole, if you want to, Nicole, if you want to uh, message Michael. He'll get your address, and we will get all that free yeah, good stuff out and, to you. Friend me and send me a message, and I'll we'll get it out to you. Do you charge by the hour? Uh, Andrea asked, do you charge by the hour or by design as a rule? Uh, no, I we charge by design. So, guys, that was super quick. And the cool thing is I could, I could do more to it. I could trick it out more. But, I mean, that's pretty simple, basic. Grab your fixer spray. They want to know about the hairspray one more time. Oh, my super expensive fixer spray. Super expensive fixer spray. No, it's just so, hairspray. Literally, it's, it's hairspray, guys. It's, uh, this is a joke. Um, the funny part is, like, there's all kinds of products out there, and there's, like, stuff that you can pay way too much for. This is Tresemme. 
It is awesome. Um, so it, it blows a nice fine mist. It doesn't shoot water at your paint. So, or alcohol, which is gonna, you know, mess it up. So you're actually just kind of sealing what you did. And also when we're done, we will, um, we'll base it, we'll go ahead and cover it back just to kind of seal it, the whole thing. And that'll help them with sweating. Um, it'll help it last all day. So you just put that on and it's good. Uh, and, and they're good to go. So now she can go out and have a blast at the bike rally or wherever she's at. And, uh, but my point that I wanted to get across is a design like this, you saw how easy that was to do. Super easy. Look how much detail, how much texture, how much work, how much stuff goes into this design. And it looks impressive. It looks like it should be a lot of money but that was super easy. So that's what I do. That's how I do festivals um, is I do impressive pieces that are super easy to do. So yeah, so I do have that stencil available. Also, um, I didn't mention it, but so I have a new website. It is called Body Paint Pro. That's where I'm gonna be selling my stencils and my, um, Trina's going to cover my face here. www.bodypaintpro.com. That's where I'll be. Okay. Gotcha. That's where I'll be selling my, uh, my stencil line, my uh, killer covers line. So you can get all that there. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, actually, the website is up. It's live. You can go on. You can see this stuff. But I left the amounts at zero and you can't buy in the shopping cart because I'm a Shopify idiot and I haven't figured all that out yet. So I'm still working on that, I'm trying. Um, so you can go on the website, you can check this stuff out and then just send me a message or friend me on Facebook and say, hey, I went under your Body Paint Pro, I wanna order this stencil, that stencil, this stencil and I can work it out in another way until I get it up and running. I'm doing too many things right now. I actually came up with the ear savers which have been ridiculous. Uh, and thank you guys all for helping me put that out there. Somebody asked about your other design. You wanna just kinda of show them that what you're oh, gonna do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, so I was gonna actually, I was gonna do another uh, skull thing and show you that, but with time, I, I can't do that. Um, this is a cool little thing though. So here's another uh, piece that I built that is intended to go so you would put this down the center of the model, boom, like that. And then you're actually going to put this piece over and fold that out and put it there. And as you were asking about, about transfer, you want to make sure this is dry. You can either airbrush on it, just air, to make sure that it dries up. Or you can have a paper towel that you can stamp it down but then you're gonna flip it and you're gonna to go to the other side. So you can stack this stuff up and you can kind of make a cool piece. So this is another, um, another design. Don't think it's up on the website yet, but it will be. Um, so kind of stay tuned for all of that. Um, so I think that's about all the time. Am I over? Yes. Probably? Yes. I'm over. So guys, I got a million more things I wanna tell you. There's a thousand things about uh, airbrushing that I would love to tell you, but it's gotta be a different class because there's so much to talk about. Um, so I do want to mention to tune in to uh, the Pro Air University Live. Next up on Thursday, but actually, rewind, uh, tomorrow there's going to be uh, some extra special deals. Donna's gonna be doing a QVC type type sale and uh, it's gonna go on for I believe three days and you will, uh, she's gonna be doing some really, really cool packages together and things like that. So check that out, that's going live tomorrow. Then on Thursday, we have Kelly Collins. He's gonna be coming up. He's been working um, Halloween stuff for like 40, uh, not 40 years. A long time. I don't know how long, but he's been working on Halloween stuff for a long time and he's going to give you some tips about Halloween 
in 2000 because it is going to change unfortunately with everything that's going on so he's going to give you tips for that then also um next after that I, oh saturday is um felly is coming up so he's going to do a facebook live he's going to teach you i think about portraitures on canvas maybe doing your own portrait so uh that's going to be another cool video you know, it's been awesome seeing art from all over the place. Everybody does their own style of stuff. So to see oil painters to this, to uh, Felly's doing the acrylic stuff, to Jay did a uh, prosthetic thing. Uh, my friend John showed you how to make molds. So thank you again so much to Donna for doing all of this because not only are we as artists able to get out there to people, but also um, it's been great to be able to see other things from other artists and get ideas and tips and things like that. So, um, any other questions or anything that we need to do? I'm not sure if you have more time or if Donna's gonna... No, uh, Donna said, yeah. you know, time-wise, whatever, I think we just want to try to cram it into an hour. But if you guys all have uh, questions or anything, I'm happy to answer it. If not... Um, you know, it was awesome having you guys in my studio and, um, I will, I, I definitely do other, um, I do other classes and other things. Like you want to learn more about airbrush specifically. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Let me do one thing real quick because people ask about this all the time. Um, they have an issue with um, troubleshooting, troubleshooting airbrushes is something that people, you wind up having problems with airbrushes and then you're like, oh, this is bad, this is hard, I can't do it. And you wanna put it down and not deal with it anymore. Um, so let me show you, because I had some of these that, okay. I push the button down, the air is still coming out. Why is the air coming out? So. Simple things like that, you just have to know your airbrushes to be able to figure out what's going on. And by the way, if you, when you noticed when you were looking in here, my airbrushes are clean. I clean, clean, clean. I don't know if you can see into that, into that tube, but this area right here is, if you look in there, you cannot tell what color I use last. That's how clean they need to be. Even having said that, when I, when I push that down, it's not coming up right away. And people are like, well, my airbrush is acting weird. It's, I don't know. Let me show you how to fix that. Um, so, okay, so it's still doing that, right? Okay, so boom, I take this off. Again, you asked about why do I leave my backs off? Because I can get to this right away and take care of an issue and I don't have to take things apart. Um, so you take your plunger out. You take, this is called Super Lube and it's amazing. Yes, it's lube, but it's for your airbrush. So you want to, uh, there's a hole down inside of here. You drop that in, you put a little dot of Super Lube in there then you don't put your trigger in a place where you're not going to remember right here. where you put it, which is right here. Um, so you, so I'm holding this back, and again, it's being used to your materials. Uh, you won't be so afraid of, of your airbrushes. Uh, the more you take them apart, fix them, deal with problems. Okay. So put that back, make sure my nut is loose. Slide the needle back in. Megan says she loves super lube. Super lube. Oh, wait, you guys, I don't have that problem anymore. So boom, there you go. That's a, that's a, a airbrush fix. Um, a lot of people I see have a problem with that and they're like, well, my, my, this is broke or that's broke. So that fixes that. Um, the reason, so again, the reason why I keep this off in the back 
is because it allows me to, if I do have an issue, that's doing the same thing. Um, if I do have an issue, like when I'm spraying, and for whatever reason it clogs up and maybe it, it stops coming out, I can actually push this down and pull that back and blow a clog through so that I so that clog is no longer there. Is Super Lube silicone based? I can't honestly answer that. It's it's made of pixie dust and Here. fairy wings hand, crushed and hand it to me. Oh. Um, I I honestly don't know. Uh, to lubricate, place a few drops of Super Lube on the trigger opening in the airbrush body. That's literally. Uh, oh, Alex oh, says it's compressor oil, same as refrigerator. So, so there you go. It's non-toxic, and it is also no silicone. So, says it on the on the thing. So yeah, there's the answer. I do know the answer. I just didn't know I knew the answer. Whoop whoop. Um, all right. So you guys, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my rambling and ranting. I am a um, um, I'm an artist. So my brain is all over the place all the time.